Hello and welcome to the virtual cafe. I'm your host, Shegulola Salami, and this is the Shegulola Salami Show. Who's next, please? Hi, my name is Lauren Wiseman. I'm a business advisor, speaker, and author. I've written three books on the music business. One was independent, one was through Greenleaf, and one was through Wiley & Sons. I do a lot of advising for branding strategies and also help out other authors in the industry from nonfiction to fiction. You know, since it's fall, I'll probably order a pumpkin spice latte. Okay, pumpkin spice latte. Great. Um, and this is the first time I'm hearing one. Little human, do we have any pumpkin? I'm guessing we use, we have to use uh, real pumpkins, right? Oh, gosh, I, I just use the, the, the flavor, but real pumpkin would be beautiful. <laughs> Okay, I will send the, the little human outside to go and see where we can get some uh, some pumpkin. Uh, okay, and what would you like to, to have with your pumpkin? What did you call it again? A pumpkin spice latte, a little bit of that nutmeg. Uh, <laughs> just just a, a fun fall drink that, that's very popular in America. <laughs> mm, interesting. Okay. Pumpkin spice latte. Right. Okay. Well, I learn about drinks every day. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> right. Whilst the little human is going to look for pumpkin somewhere, um, what? Well, um, who's next, please? Hi. That would be me. My name is India R. Adams, and I'm an author of fiction novels. It started off with um, working on some self-help, and it ended up growing into stories and just trying to reach out and help other. A lot of fun and but on the wild side I would like a margarita on the rocks with no salt because it'll make me blow up like a frog okay see if I did that if I got the little human to, to get that kind of drink we're all gonna end up in jail I don't think oh. I would survive in jail okay I think I'm too pretty to survive in jail <laughs> <laughs> um, how about um an iced tea with extra lemon no that's that's what a human, what about I see with extra lemon? Okay, I hope you guys are not in a hurry, so she's got to go and find pumpkins. So when she comes back, she'll get it all ready. So hope you're not in a hurry. None whatsoever. <laughs> okay, perfect. Right, so um, Lauren, what you said sounded really interesting. You work in the music industry. I do. I, I work in the music industry, authors, and even normal businesses. Interesting. Now, see, now, what you do is kind of like very, um, is it bourgeois, bougie, like you drink? It's a nice... It, it is. Oh, it's very, it's very individualized. A lot of people inside of the writing world, as I'm sure you, you both already know, spend so much time focusing or listening sometimes to very templated structures and thinking they have to follow something so exact and direct and by doing so they lose themselves their stories and the opportunities for growth so a lot of times when i'm working with an author or talking with other authors it's really exploring what they want to do what they want to create and the best way to create it for them it's an author that's working to their personality as opposed to an author that's working toward a format that is some kind of rule that doesn't really exist. Interesting. It's quite interesting you say that, though, because I've been having, you know, off and on conversations with people, um, you know, with others about writing conventions and genre formulas. Um, <clears throat> now, I don't know if you follow any of my writing, if you don't, I hope you would. Um, so I've just written my first paranormal. Actually, I shouldn't really say paranormal because I don't think it's paranormal. It's more supernatural. Um, so I'll say I've written my first supernatural erotic romance. And when I was reading on the Halloween So You Think You Can Write website, um, just because I was nosy to see, you know, what, what um, Halloween had to say about writing romance and the different um, heat levels and whatnot. And something that they wrote, right, if I remember, go, going off the top of my head, and please do not quote me because the few weeks, months that I read this, and the impression that I got was that, let's say you're going to write romance. <clears throat> now, their formula is that by the time you've reached I don't know, this is me just picking a figure off the top of my head. Let's say you've written, by the time you've reached 25%, you need to have uh, achieved um, X, Y, and Z. By the time you've written 50%, something specifically needs to have happened. 
So I might say, um, by the time you've written 25%, the two main characters probably would have kissed. By the time you've reached 50%, maybe they're attracted to each other, but then they're fighting the attraction of. Uh, and by then, by the time you reach 100%, you're going to be having either your happy ever after or your happy for now. You know, so there's this strict formula, uh, which, you know, and that's what prompted me to ask the conversation with, you know, this group that I'm in, is because what I've written doesn't follow that formula. So, I'm glad what you wrote didn't follow that formula. That's, <laughs> that's good that you wrote, you wrote for you. And you know what, though? At the same time, in some of those templates, that, that might work for another author. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. I think it's a beautiful thing. Like when, you're say, when you're saying that you didn't necessarily follow it, I'd much rather read your book and, and, and something that isn't as, as formulaic, where you decided when they kissed, you decided when it became that much more erotic, where you bring the surprises from your life, your experiences, and your voice, because there are so many books out there that are so exactly that, formulaic. So as you expand and stretch into your voice, then from there, you know, editing can happen to make the flow happen, and you can have the editors, you can have the proofreaders or whatnot, but I really am much more of a fan of each author exploring as far and wide as they can. Hmm. See, now, I totally get that. Well, see, sometimes, again, <clears throat> and there are different opinions um, with regards to um, the success of the book or not, because different people write for different reasons. And when an author starts off, you know, most of the time, this is what I call an egometric, right? So they're sort of caught up with the different sort of egometrics, like, oh, how many five-star reviews have I got? And how many this, <laughs> and how many that, you know, all those sort of egometrics, right? And then they lose sight of it. So, right, and I swear to God, this was not meant to be about my book, but, you know, just because we, we had talked, I was just going to give, like, Someone said to me that there are loads of people who actually prefer to read formulaic stuff. And so when you're um, advising your mm. authors, what would you normally say to them? Because, you know, if they then get people um, when they're doing their marketing and then for some reason their marketing try and attracts people who follow, like to read formula stuff, and then they end up giving them loads of negative reviews just because it's not the, 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 the writing is not following the norm. Um, what do you say to your authors then? I th I, well, I mean, I think, and I, I love the ego metrics. I love that term. That's very, very cool of you. Um, I, I think it's stretching, it's stretching beyond those. And when you're marketing, and a lot of times, I mean, my, my second book, there was a lot of marketing budget behind it, but we spent most, and we spent that money going elsewhere. Yeah. Let's, let's look at option or people that might not be musicians. And let's, let's try to go after phrases to get more, as many eyes on this book to see what they decide. Because even a negative review for Artist Guide, for the review, the negative reviews I have, I enjoy them. I share them on Facebook. I used to share them on Facebook. Mm. Oh, okay, and why do you do that? I think that the, the sense of books and art and music and food are all opinions from, yeah. from like, you know, the, the folk tales to history to a, ch a children's book to, to erotica. What yeah. One person enjoys, another person might not like. And so I think as an author, when you feel proud of a body of work, to be able to share that and share it proud, and even as somebody that might not like it, I'm sorry you didn't enjoy it, but thank you for the re you know thank you for the review. I'm sorry it didn't resonate with you. Yes, it's all it's 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 all balance. Yes, no, definitely. Oh my God, we 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 getting to forget our other um, guest in here. What do you think about writing conventions? Have you applied any to your writing? Um, your last question broke up a little bit. Do you mind repeating that? <laughs> no, I said, have you applied any formula conventions to your writing? I don't. Um, I really, really kind of write from my heart. Yeah. Um, I mean, writing was one of those things that just kind of came naturally to me. So yeah. when I do research and I do find out there's all these different conventions, 
conventions and supposed to quote unquote be doing. I'm always shocked because I haven't followed those. Um, I let my story take an organic from what betas and different reviewers are telling me. I seem to have a good form of my own. <laughs> yes. So, so to hear how other people are doing it. Mm -hmm. But then what do you think? So I was having another conversation and I seem to always have loads of different random conversations with people. So I was having another conversation, um, this time not about um, formulas, but about conventions. And this time we were talking about um, sci-fi, okay? And then I'm going to show that I have serious baby brain or is it fish brain? Um, so because this is about Star Wars, I want to use this as an example. And I'm sure all the Star Wars fans are probably going to go, oh, how can she not know the names, right? Because I'm really, really bad at remembering people's names. I think I have a gazillion things to remember, and remembering characters' names in Star Wars is not high on my priority. So please forgive me <laughs> if you're shocked that I don't remember uh, the exact names. I think is it Obi-Wan, and you know what? I'm not even going to go there. So part of the discussion that I was having with this person, he was saying that whilst it's okay to not but, um, follow formulas, there are some things that are expected. So if you're writing a fantasy high action um, book, for instance, um, what people might expect is something like, um, let's say there's, uh, no, let's see, okay, so, there's always going to be, and I think of Samuel L. Jackson because he's always a mentor in one film or the other. So let's say you've got someone who's going to be your nice Samuel L. Jackson, and uh, you know he's in mentor. Oh, oh, and also another one, The Matrix. See now I can remember the the, the characters. Um, so you've got Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne. So uh, now mentor and mentee. Now convention. One or two things are going to happen. Either the mentor is there or the mentor is not there either the mentee is a good person or a bad person and that will then determine how the story pans out so you know um, apparently according to this guy um keanu reeves no sorry lawrence fishburne had to be taken prisoner to allow um keanu reeves to flourish and become you know the person that he's meant to be and fulfill his destiny so when writing, do you follow any sort of conventions that sort of expected, you know, where either A or B is bound to happen, or if you go to school, you either graduate or you don't graduate. Like, do you find that conventions are also important or not important? India? Internet problems on my side that I'm, I'm barely getting um, half of what you're saying. <laughs> so I'm trying to take bits. Oh dear, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's technology. As much as we love it, it just likes to, you know, play with us and push buttons that it's not meant to push. So I'm saying that. Do you follow? And I think it is where I'm looking. Mountains. I'm in the mountains in North Carolina, and uh, we seem to have a lot of issues here. Oh dear. Okay. No, that's fine. So what was the last thing you heard me say? I heard something about Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Oh, that's, that was a long spiel. I'm not even going to try to remember. <laughs> I was saying, do you follow <laughs> any... I'm like... Yeah, I was saying, do you follow any writing conventions? You know, like, for instance, if you're going to write about someone going to school, um, the person either passes and graduates or fails and doesn't graduate. You know, so that's sort of like the normal expectation. So do you write um, to conventions? Mm. Um, I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, asking what I write to normal conventions. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. So when you, let's say you were going to write about someone going to school and taking um, exams and it's, the convention would be either the person graduates or doesn't graduate. How would you put your own spin to it? I do always consider who is reading it. If it's for YA, I do always try to encourage for kids to continue to go to school and to graduate. The hmm. reason is going to be significant enough to where that child or young reader can actually learn empathy. Um, 
Um, wait. I will, if there can be a wonderful emotional lesson in there, I will let them go ahead and drop out. But, but I do try to get actually get some sort of degree, GED, or move on to college and, and keep fighting forward. So if you don't make it, keep going. Yeah. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, how about you, Lauren? I hope you got all my spiel. Oh, no, I got, I, I got it all. Um, I, I really think it kind of comes around to what I was saying before. I think the personalization of what someone feels as a writer, or as an author, there's so many negative connotations in these writing conferences. And I don't speak at any of the writing conferences. I speak to writers and authors and explain that it's not about coming up with that perfect opening line. And that a lot of it comes, it comes into the marketing. But when you're, when you're creating a story, whether it's, like you said, some kind of exciting action-packed event, while there are formulas that have, have worked that action-packed event, that also allows you the opportunity to say, hey, I want to try to break the formula. Or I have an idea and I want to share it and explore it. And maybe what you end up writing becomes 1,200 pages that gets yeah. dialed down to 400. Yeah. But you got your entire story out, and from there, working with someone else that may be able to help you edit could yeah. could keep you, or 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 inside of those twelve hundred pages, it might fall into those formats. But I just I I like to lose the strictness in writing. I mean, the last book that I did was for Wiley and Sons, and they put a very strict formatting um, on the book for me, and it became it became frustrating. The second book I wrote, I loved, I had fun. I worked with the editors, we changed things, but there was a free flow of creativity and concept. And I think that anybody that's writing, they should feel that f free flow. Yes. 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 No, I, I totally, I totally agree. Um, okay. So out of interest, though, how did you come from, so which one was your first, which was in your, in your nice, you know, arsenal of, um, achievements which one started first music or writing i started as a drummer and then became a music producer then i was i started consulting other musicians and record labels and from there a friend of mine dared basically dared me to write a book and i said i'm not a writer i'm not an author and he said try to take an approach like you would to music and just start writing ideas down and the, the first book I just made myself write 35, 45 minutes a day, every single day. And I wrote terrible, terrible things, but inside of all that I wrote became what was my first book. And, it, and because of editors helping and people bring the format, just to free flow out ideas and create a story. And again, this is a little bit more, I wouldn't say it's a tech, technical manual, the first one, but it, it hit on a whole bunch of different topics. And then from there, the editors, the proofreaders, the technical editors, they, they helped to format it into what it became. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's, that's interesting. So did you thank your friend for daring you? <laughs> I, I did, I, I invited him, you know, thanked him in the book and invited him to the, the first uh, book signing. And it was funny because it got me into writing. I, I felt, I felt incomplete after the first book came out, just like I do a lot, just like I used to in music. And so the second book, which has the same name as the first, I just called it the second edition, but it was a complete rewrite, was yeah. me trying to explore further and be a little bit more organized and be a little bit more of my voice. And so my, my second book is the book that I'm most, I'm most proud of. And I tell other authors with their books saying, oh, I've got this crazy story, or this is here, this is too much. And I still believe, and I know this isn't very business oriented, but if you have that story in you, even if you never publish it, yeah, why not write it and get it out of you, even if it's just for you? Yeah, yeah. No, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so at the moment, do you are you open to taking on other authors? Oh yeah, I do a lot of single, um, single hour and small package consults with authors to, from from whether whether they're feeling overwhelmed from things that they've read to just setting up a simplified production plan. A lot of authors also contact me toward the end after they have their book done, and we figure out different marketing tactics 
to save the money but get their voice out. A, a very simple and quick example for my second book, if you search on YouTube anywhere in the world, music business book, music industry book, yeah. music marketing book, it points at me somewhere on that first page. And, and a lot of people, when they first start marketing their book, as opposed to picking an audience, they push the title so much. And what mm -hmm. I say is, let's figure out the brand that isn't necessarily your title of the things that people are searching on that you answer, address, or give them in your book. And that kind of marketing online, it can save people thousands of dollars and it points people to your result, your art, as opposed to trying to get everybody to know your name or your title. Hmm. So if you're just going to give us, you know, some free tips, what sort of strategy would you use? Of course. I, I think that the, I think first off, being able to make sure that every book that you have is an audio, is an audio book in some format. And even if it's something you're recording in your bedroom or your yeah. closet, maybe you have some clothes around you and a simple microphone on your computer, still being able to have that is a great thing. The other yeah. tip that I've been, I've been doing more lately is I tell people when it comes to an ebook, break it out. Mm. So even in the way of delivering a different chapter, so maybe your paperback comes out on January 1st, 2017. Yeah. On February, release chapter one as an ebook within itself so that when you mark it in March, you're telling people, here's chapter two. At the end of releasing all your chapters, you can release a full ebook. But the more that an author is marketing something new inside of something that's been released, it draws more people to engage them. And the other thing I love, I, I love on social media or Twitter is if you have characters, mm -hmm. add, add their voices on social media and Facebook as opposed to this is my book and this is about this person and he's really, he's really angry and you'll relate. Have yeah. a Facebook post that says this is Scott and yeah. he has a fear of cats. Yeah. And, you know, and, and he talk to, talks about something funny. So people that slowly come to you they find engagement and humor and then they've just gotta buy that book yeah oh interesting interesting and i was going to ask you a question on it oh yes yeah, so right you were saying that you know to make a book is an ebook um now but what if and you were saying um you know it doesn't matter so if, if someone just records it you know in their bedroom do you mean they should put it on on youtube or do they put it on audible for instance I love Audible. I mean, what I did with Artist Guide, chapters 1 through 12 were separate on Audible. And there was a full version. But then I also, I gave away a free version on YouTube that was just the introduction. I gave away a free version that was, it was just a couple minutes that was the conclusion. And then I did additional audios as, as I'd re release an audio chapter and then say, you know, here's something digging in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and continually teasing and it, it was in the sense of foreplay information for the book yeah and the more that connected with a lot of different elements outside of the book it brought them to saying hey i've seen value or i've heard value or i now have interest now i'm going to go make the investment and purchase it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sounds like a really really good idea ah Wow. Well, it's been way, way, way more than half an hour. I hope you guys are still okay. And I feel really bad that connections really playing up with India. India, we still with you. Hello. What was that? Oh, dear. I was just checking if we were still with you, but I see your internet is still playing out. Yeah, it's giving me a real hard time. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm sorry about that. Um, Okay, let's see if we can give you another another 15 seconds of fame. Um, can you tell us about your book briefly? Let's see if the internet will behave itself. I'm so sorry. What was that question? I was just saying, um, do you want to tell us a bit about your book? Let's see if the internet will behave itself. Okay, no, the internet. The internet's not behaving itself either. Um, India? Oh, there you are. 
Sorry? I'm so sorry. It's just so broken up. I'm just getting little bits and pieces of your words. Okay. No, no, don't worry about it. We can always come back to you um, next week. Um, okay. Um, Lauren, if someone we needed to um, contact you, say they would like you to um, assist them, you know, because, you know, writing can be quite overwhelming, you know, with loads of information out there. Um, how would someone get in touch with you? They can touch base with me through laurenweisman.com, L-O-R-E-N-W-E-I-S-M-A-N.com. And if they mentioned it, that they heard it here on your show, I'll do a 50% discount for a half hour or an hour to talk about whatever an author wants to talk about or what they might need to organize. And also a last tip with all the authors out there as you create, Make sure to share those little audios, those little videos, those short quotes. The more that you're putting out and creating that world around your book, even beyond your book, it's going to yes. draw that many more people to your book and your future books. Yes. Yes. No, that sounds, that sounds um, like an amazing tip. And thank you so much, you know, for, for the discount. And fingers crossed someone would want to take you up um, on your offer. And the good thing about it, though, I find about podcasts is that once they're out there in the world, it stays there forever. So who knows? Maybe in a year's time, someone would just contact you and be like, oh, can I, can I you know, is the, is the 50% still valuable? <laughs> Absolutely. And it will be. No, I, lo I love that about podcasts too. I have a, I have a podcast on iHeart and it's, it's funny how people come back after something that's been up for seven months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's fabulous. So thank you. Are you on Facebook or are you on Twitter? I'm on both. And, and I tell every author, be on every social media you can. You don't have to be active on them, but reserve them with your name, whether it's your author name or the name that you use for writing so that nobody else can take it from you. Yes, that sounds like a good idea, actually. Okay, perfect. So any last words? And I'm really sorry about this, everyone. I'm really sorry that India's um, internet's been playing up. And who knows, maybe if she's free, she might come back um, some other time, um, you know, with better internet um, connection. Uh, so any last words of wisdom before we call it a day? I just, I'd like to tell people, believe in your art. Don't let other people tell you you're wrong. It doesn't work in music. It doesn't work in food. It doesn't work in movies. So why should it work here? If you love what you're writing, then write it. If it's got to be self-published or even if it's just for you, make it for you. But you have something in a story or an idea inside of you. So let it out. And then supporting it with the marketing and the organization, that's the next step. But don't let anybody tell you that you or your ideas don't have any merit to them. Yes. No, perfect. Well, thank you guys for coming on the show. It's been absolutely amazing chatting with both of you, um, even though we didn't really do much chatting with India. But I've had so much fun, and I hope you had fun too as well. Absolutely. One quick question, though. What self-published book have you read recently that's not your own? What's up? Uh, Minter Dials, uh, The Last Ring Home. Okay, who's that by? Uh, it's, by it's by a guy named Minter Dial, and it's an amazing World War, II, uh, a World War II book about mm -hmm. his grandfather, and it's, it's a beautiful book. Okay, what did you call, because the line wasn't really clear, so Minted Die, what was the title? Uh, the Last Ring Home. It actually, it actually comes out in about a month. I have an advanced copy of it, but it's, yeah, the, the, uh, the Last Ring Home is a World War II POW uh, story about courage, love, honor, and all of it happening in World War II. Oh, Fabulous, fabulous. Well, you hear this first, and you can tell, you know, you can tell me styles as you know, you've given him a shout out on the show, and fingers crossed, someone might give it, uh, go and check his book out. All I right, definitely ladies. will. <laughs> yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the show, and hopefully we will chat again very soon. Thanks so much. Okay, bye now. Bye.